going on family? Good evening. Hi Jesse. What's up? What's going on family? Good evening. Good evening. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Welcome, welcome everybody. I need you to share this session with your friends and family. Let's have an awesome time together in the presence of God. I'm excited about tonight. I can't not wait. Welcome, 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 everybody. I'm just gonna give it a, a few more minutes for everybody to join in. My guest for tonight is already here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Welcome, welcome everybody. What's going on? I hope you had a wonderful day. Hope your day wasn't too stressful. <laughs> it's Tuesday. Uh, come on, invite your friends, invite your family. Let's have an awesome time together tonight. So excited, I'm so excited. I'm excited and I'm grateful to God for all the other sessions that we've had so far. God has been truly, truly faithful. He's been truly, truly faithful. Uh, we're just gonna get going in a few minutes. Alrighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so excited about tonight. My guest for tonight is amazing, and I can't wait. Can't wait for us to get right into this. Come on in, come on in, just share this live session with your friends and let's have a great time together. This is gonna be real good. Alrighty. Uh, let me see what we have here. I am super excited about tonight and my guest is here and I'm just going to bring him in. Uh, but before I do that, I remember when I when I first got to Canada and you know I heard about like a bass player, um, some very crazy bass player, and I was so curious to meet who this person, you know? <laughs> and I remember the first time that I met my guest for tonight and I heard him play. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what, what is going on here? What am I hearing? Um, and uh, it's just been, an, it's, you know, just watching him grow and, and seeing what God is doing in his life right now is it's just amazing. It's, it's mind blowing. And I'm so honored to have him here tonight. So. This is gonna be, this is gonna be awesome. This is gonna be awesome. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Alrighty, so I'm gonna bring him in and we're gonna get right into it. Okay, there we go. 
Come. Yes, sir. Hey, Pastor. How Kofi. you doing, sir? <laughs> I am good. I'm good. How are you? Allah, I'm doing well. Love you so much, bro. And I'm excited to be here. Thank Listen, <laughs> thank you so much for joining in. I know you had a busy schedule. I know you had a very, very, very busy schedule. You literally just finished, the, you know, the class. Yeah. So thank you for taking the time for to be on here. I really appreciate it. My honor. It's my honor. It's my honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I was just talking about my first time of coming to, to this country yeah. and hearing about some very crazy bass player out there. And I was so eager to meet him until yeah. I met you and, and I heard you play and I was like, this can't be real. <laughs> and, and I'm just, you know, just watching you grow and seeing what God is doing in your life right now. It's just, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's encouraging. And I'm just so honored to, to know you um, as a friend, uh, as a brother. And just thank you for, for taking your time tonight. Listen, thank you for, for having me. I honor you and honor your ministry, your whole family, and your whole, the whole the whole psalmist music. I honor you all. And, um, you know, I literally, um, um, I have I have an assignment doing about, about two hours. I said, hey, man, uh, I have to be here. I was thinking, I'm like, man, should I just tell him I have to get this thing done? But I was like, you know what? I will stop just to spend some time because I gave you my word. And wow. I believe honoring honoring the word because i love you and i love the ministry i'm here i'm here and uh <laughs> thank you for having thank me. you thank yeah. you so much i appreciate that uh we're just gonna get right into it i'm not gonna take much of your time um i know i know a lot of people know you out there already so but for the purpose of those that don't i'm just gonna ask that you you know just give us a little bit introduction to talk a little bit about yourself sure so i am um just just a a a son of god i'm a son of god <laughs> son i'm a brother um i'm a friend um a lover of music lover of god um i endeavor every single day to be more submitted to him um i, I love to to read love to study love to love music love people and uh, yeah i'm just i'm just a, a fun loving guy um, passionate about the next generation, passionate about the now generation, passionate about leadership, passionate about impartation, and above all, I'm passionate about revival. And so that, uh, that is me in a nutshell. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you again for, for taking the time. Uh, this is episode. Sometimes I forget what episode I'm even doing right <laughs> now. <laughs> this is episode four. Um, and uh, we've, we've gone through a lot of different stages and God has been really taking us through understanding what purpose is um, and understanding what his calling is over our life and, uh, and you know, get into that place of fellowship with God and understanding that there's no purpose outside of him. And, you know, the, the theme of this is fearless. And, you know, you look at fearless and it's almost like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to join in and find out a way, a quick way of being fearless. Uh, but, you know, God has been taking us through, you know, coming to that place where without coming to the presence of God, without coming to know him, um, you, cannot you cannot really live above fear. Um, and I'm just excited uh, about, you know, what God is going to lead us into tonight. Um, every episode has been refreshing, has been new. Um, so I'm just going to ask you to talk a little bit about, you know, understanding God's purpose. Like, just take us through your journey, like how you started and what your understanding was at the time, what your understanding is right now. What are the things that, you know, God has taken you through that has made you who you are today? I think that's a great question. I believe that we are, um, we are, we are still, still discovering, still every day, on the journey to more and more of the revelation of what God wants us to do. I call it a revelation, man of God, because I believe mm -hmm. when we are born, there's a seed that is placed on the inside of us, and I feel as though there was a vision that God has placed on us. There's a gift, there's a purpose, and I feel as though we mm -hmm. spent much more of our adolescent years, much more of our 20s, much more of our lives, uh, continually to uncover everything that God has already placed on the inside of us. I feel as though every birthday is an opportunity 
to uh, tap into a new revelation of this of the purpose that God initially placed on the inside of us. So for me personally, I would say that um, God had placed vision, God had placed purpose, God had placed these things on the inside of me, but distractions, my own agendas, uh, my own my own plans uh, began to muddy and cloud the revelation or the uh, coming out of this of this gift or of this purpose. Um, and so I would say for my, myself, my journey was that of um, differentiating the purpose between your gifting and your and, and you know, your purpose. I feel as though mm -hmm. when I'm gifting, many people may, may think, oh, because I'm gifted for this, this is my purpose. No, I don't think that. I, I feel as though a, your gift is to augment your purpose. Your gift augments what God has called you to do. Your purpose is what you feel called to do. Is what you feel as though God has positioned you to do. Your gift mm -hmm. augments that calling. So for mm -hmm. me personally, I feel as though my my calling or my, the purpose, if you can call it, uh, was something that took me a long time to discover. It was something that mm -hmm. took me a long time to you know continually reveal it and and to understand what God's purpose was for my life. Um, I knew that he wanted to do big things with me. I knew that he wanted to take me to different parts and to do different things. But I didn't know that this is what God had in mind the whole time. I think for me, mm -hmm. the process of discovery, um, it was also a process of, um, how can I say it? A process of solitude and separation. And in mm -hmm. the moments, I really felt like God began to speak to me specifically about um, what he's calling me to do and what he's called mm -hmm. So my process was an encounter with God. That's my that was my process yeah. of revealing his purpose to me. Uh was a process of encounter. When I mm -hmm. felt and I knew and I sensed in my spirit that God had encountered me, when he encountered me, he revealed the purpose he had always placed in me. And I began to mm -hmm. see more clearly what he's always called me to do. So my journey is that of revelation and awakening, awakening to God's promises and who he is, and then revealing of that purpose on the inside. Yeah. Wow, that's that's really good. You, you, you know, you talked about, you know, differentiating your gift and your purpose. Because I, you know, I find that a lot of, it's, it's so easy, maybe, I find it so easy to just think that your gift is your purpose. Your gift mm -hmm. is your calling. And I know that a lot of people struggle with that with that a lot. So what would you say, you know, where at the worst what point in your life were you able to know that okay, this is this is the gift that I have, but this is not what God wants me to be doing. I think for me early on I knew the gift that God had placed on the inside of me. At least I thought um I knew a large majority of my life would be dedicated towards young people. I knew a lot mm. a lot of my life would be dedicated towards atmosphere and um cultivating atmospheres, whether it be through prayer, through word, through worship. Um, mm -hmm. God has positioned me in such a way to calibrate atmospheres wherever I go. Um, I feel as though that's something that God has graced me to do by his, by his grace and all humility is to calibrate the atmosphere. And um, I think that was, I think as you grow older, year by year, as I was saying, more and more of that is revealed. And mm -hmm. so early on, I, you know, you said you said you met me playing the guitar and doing all that stuff. I love playing the guitar. It's a it's a part of me, but it's not all of me. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. what I'm and I think that that's what a lot of people get to the point was where they don't want to see all that you have to offer. You know, they only want to see one aspect of who you are, um, and you can't mm -hmm. encourage you from evolving. You're in the mm -hmm. same lane. You're just growing in that lane, and I had to learn that the hard way because I thought that my purpose was playing the guitar. No, my mm -hmm. purpose was creating atmospheres. My purpose was mm. people. My purpose was creating a place where people could encounter God. If that's through word, if that's through prophecy, if that's through deliverance, if that's through healing, if that's through whatever facet, that mm. is that is what God has called me to do. And so when I know and I found that this is my purpose, I realized that all the giftings on the inside of me, the gifting to preach, the gifting to exalt, the gifting to do all those giftings and music and all those things that are in the inside of me begin to now find expression within that purpose. I would say I was probably around the age of 17 when I discovered that because I didn't start mm -hmm. writing songs or, you know, till late in life. I didn't start singing till late in life. I've always been a musician, started off on drums, then went to guitar, bass, keys, uh, you know, all that stuff, uh, saxophone. Mm -hmm. all. So because of that, 
I, I discovered this revelation late, late, late in life. I would say, well, a relative to when somebody would think 17, 18 is when I really felt like, okay, yeah, like I'm, I, I feel as though I know that I'm called to this. I know this is my purpose and all these giftings will find expression in different things. So yeah, man, I think that, I think that's good. Sammy, what's up, man? What's up? <laughs> that's, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah. Um, now I want us to talk about the importance of spending time in the presence of God. Now you talked about, you know, bringing the atmosphere, uh, bringing the presence of God. Um, I find that maybe because of, you know, everything that has been going on in this past few years, uh, it's so easy to just, you know, just relax and just be like, you know what, it's fine. It's okay. Uh, my, myself and my wife, we were talking about it, uh, I think yesterday, we we're talking about the importance, especially even now than before, um, the importance of just seeking the presence of God, just spending time, just staying in his presence. And because without it, like the, the Bible says that Jesus called them that they might be with him and that he might send them, right? So without without that first part, it's it's hard, it's difficult to actually be able to do anything. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think spending time with the Lord, we are we are lost without him. That's the first. Mm. We have to understand that we are fish out of water when we are not in the presence of the Lord. Mm. Um, the presence of the Lord is our natural habitat. It's where mm. we're alive. We come alive when we're with him. And so when we're not with him, we, 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 we don't know our bearings. We don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. So mm. spending time with the Lord is a necessity, not an option. You, because when we begin mm. to realize how essential uh, time spent in his presence is, what will happen is that time spent in his presence, that secret place moment, that time of consecration before the Lord then spills over into what we do on a daily basis and, and, and mm -hmm. the times that we are living at our gift, if it's singing, if it's music, if it's preaching, if it's teaching, that finds expression. They're all expressions of time spent with the Lord. So the, the, um, the, uh, the essential practice of devotion, I think that's one thing I talk about, Man of God is the essential practice of devotion, not morning devotion. I'm talking about a life devoted. Mm. When we spend time and we live a life that is a life devoted, that life that's devoted then spills over and finds expression in gifts. What we have nowadays is people with gifts operating in gifts without cutting out, without going to the source. We have mm. that are exercising in gifts because we are good. We've mastered, we've entered into the mastery of gift. We've entered into the mastery of performance. So the mastery of performance does not give way. We've clogged that in business. We have something called the bottleneck. We, you know, we've clogged that. There's a bottleneck of flow The mm. has been blocked. The pipe can't flow because us as individuals are meant to go and plug ourselves in. We cut off from the source. And so we are expressing ourselves through arts. But mm. the arts are mastery. It's fleshly mastery. It's not time spent. And so what we're getting is we're getting recycled revelation, recycled songs. Come on, recycled, come on. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? So That's we're getting good. recycled things. And so it's not fresh. The Bible says that we are to go and get fresh, fresh manna, fresh mm. manna. Every day, the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness, they receive fresh manna. Ask yourself this question. How come the manna of today couldn't keep them for tomorrow? The Bible says that if they hadn't eaten it in that day, it expired. Yeah. They would yes, get sick. If they ate it, they would get sick. They could die. If they couldn't mm. drink that drink. They couldn't eat that manna. There's fresh manna for every day. What does that mean? There's fresh songs for every day. Heaven is depositing songs. We don't have mm. enough position to be able to receive it the problem is this the god is not done supplying he's not he's not cut off from supplying we are the ones that have cut off from receiving you see so it's that wow, combination right there. i think i'll stop there but yeah no come on come on keep going <laughs> it, it's, it's easy, but, but but that's you're, that's you're the truth good. You're, that's, yeah, the, that's the god like and absolutely. i believe in the practical faith i believe in practical faith practical christianity that's mm -hmm. the truth of it the truth of it is when we begin to devote ourselves and get to points whereby uh, we are able to take in from what the Lord is saying and find expression in these different things. That's where we begin to see God do new things. We're asking the Lord for fresh manna. That is, that mm. has been a prayer point of mine is, is fresh manna. And we receive that by daily encounter with the Lord. Uh, our encounter, mm. you know, uh, it's, it's incredible. The encounter that Paul received in Acts chapter nine, 
that wasn't just the encounter that sustained him for the rest of his journey and the rest of his mm, four, yeah. his four mm. uh, you know, trips and mission trips. No, it was a daily encounter. The Bible says, and after that, mm. then he went to the desert, where in the dry land in the desert, God began to speak to him in the desert. And there he was mm. learning in the school of the desert. There will always be yeah. moments separation where God begins to teach you how to hear him better, where God yeah. begins to teach you how to know him, how to love him better. And it's those moments and those devotions and those practices we develop in devotion that will become the things that we use to be able to pull down and to connect the source of God and express it through the arts. Yes, that's what I was saying. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to make notes here, but I can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh, this this is so good because I remember yeah. I remember for for me growing up um, in church back in the days they they taught us mostly m not more about how to be a musician or how to be able to play this or play that, but more about seeking God, mm. um, reading your Bible, yeah. praying. And I remember back in the days we used to have these yearly Bible calendars where you know you you get to you have to read the Bible like. <laughs> from Genesis of, to yeah. Revelation every year, you know, and looking at where we are right now, you know, like, it's almost like we have, we have brought down, I would, for lack of better words, the standard of God. Like we, we don't, we don't think it's that hard. We don't think it's, it's almost like talking about devotions where now it's like, yeah, I'm just going to do it whenever it's comfortable for me, whenever it's convenient for me. So can you talk about that seeking God not out of your comfort zone. Mm, mm. Seeking God not out of your, your comfort zone. I believe that God is, to go to deeper realms, and the, you know, the Bible says deep cause onto deep. I feel as though there's always a, another level. There's always a deeper measure. Um, mm. You know, it's, it's, it's not that God hasn't been revealed to us, but it's that we need greater measure of his revelation in our life. We need to know mm. him better. It's not that we don't know him. But the reason why we seek him is because we want to know him better. That's why. Better. Now, um, when it comes to the comfort zone and seeking God out of the comfort zone, it's, it's out of desire. You know, it's out of desire. The Bible talks about the heart. And a lot of the Old Testament begins to talk about the heart and says, you know, guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life, out of the abundance of the mouth, uh, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It begins wow. to speak about this heart. This heart is developed in three things in the Old Testament, in, in, in bibliology, in, in biblical, um, you know, uh, times or in, from the Bible. They, they consider the heart to be three things, your will, your intellect and your feelings. That's what they consider the, the heart. So when God is speaking mm -hmm. to the heart, he's speaking to your will, speaking to your feelings, speaking to your intellect. The problem mm -hmm. is um, with seeking God out of your comfort zone, you cannot decide to seek God outside in a new way if you don't have the desire to do so. We need to be praying to ask wow, God that's good. desire to seek him more. Mm. Because if we say, seek God out of your comfort zone, you'll seek God today, but you won't seek him tomorrow. And that's mm. what we're into, man of God. We're running mm. into a problem as a generation where we only seek God when we need him. We only seek mm. God for today, but what about for tomorrow? We not, we're only asking God for manna for today. What about manna for tomorrow? Do you get what I'm saying? So there is this, there's this necessity for us to be able to say, Lord, we need to know you better than we did mm. yesterday. And that's the mm. desire. So when, when God begins to speak and shape our feelings, our will, our, yeah. our heart, our desires, he shapes those desires to seek him day mm -hmm. after. It's only when our desires are shaped to love mm. God more that we begin to serve him and find him outside of our comfort zone. Our comfort mm. zone means that we serve God on our own terms. Our comfort zone means that we, wow, serve, we love God <laughs> when we want to. You mm. know what I'm Outside mm. of the comfort zone is when we serve God, irrespective of our feelings, our will, and our intellect. So notwithstanding, like putting our mm. feelings, our will, and our intellect aside, we will still love God. That's when God begins to shape your desires. So mm. we have to begin to literally, God says he'll grant us the desires of our hearts. I wonder how many people will begin to ask God, God, give me the desire of my heart that I want us to know you better. Mm. It's the simple devotion that leads to, to miracles, that leads to all the supernatural, that leads to seeing wonders. You know, it leads to seeing all these things. It comes from simple devotion, mm. simple devotion to the Father. When we begin to lose that, then we begin to lose everything. You know, so yeah, that, that's, 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 that's it. Oh my goodness, this is so good. This is so good. Thank you so much uh, for, for sharing that. 
uh, it's it's we need we need to hear things like this. Um, now people might start wondering how does this relate to fearless? How yeah. does this relate to being fearless? Uh, one of the sessions that we had, uh, I think, that the episode three, the the minister was talking about. Uh, for God has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of sound mind. She was talking about how fear is a spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not just something that you can read books to get out of. It's not something that has to be a higher power, mm -hmm. right, to overcome fear. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. The Bible talks about in Genesis 12, verse 1, it says, and then what? It says, and God called Abram and told them to come for I'm going to send you to land I will show you that's that's that that is ultimately a decision between faith and fear right and, mm. and that is the crucible or the intersection between will I follow God's voice or will I follow my own voice? My own voice will tell mm. me to stay here with my father and my mother because that is comfortable. You have to understand that the the reason why many of us are afraid is because we don't want to leave what we've known. Like it's talking about the comfort zone. The reason why we are afraid, yes, it could be because, oh my gosh, like it, God is calling me higher. I'm not ready for it. But if you look at the essence of it, if you look mm -hmm. at the underlining thing, the reason why many of us are afraid is because we are comfortable where we are. And Come so the Bible says, and Abram was called out. So you have to understand that mm. faith will call you out. Come on. Feed me. Until my trust mm. is without borders. May I walk upon the water, mm. wherever you may be. Mm. So we're talking about going beyond. Going mm. beyond. Going mm. and leaving our comfort zones. It's leaving, mm. leaving what we've known. So when we begin to leave what we know and we begin to trust God's voice, first thing is that he will send us out. He will launch us out. And mm. so handling fear and becoming fearless is basically saying, I am going to kill the comfort zone. I am literally not going to rely on, on this risk. I'm not going to yeah. rely on, I'm not going to rely on this comfort. I'm going to rely on God's grace and faith. And so I mm. find that God begins to move at the end of us. You know, <laughs> let me say that again. Come on, that Come when on. say that again. Come on, you got to say that again. You got to say that again. <laughs> when, we get, when we get to the end of ourselves, God starts doing mm. his best work. I'm not saying that God doesn't mm. work. I'm saying he starts, I believe, in my personal experience, this is special revelation. This is not wow. general revelation. This is special wow. revelation to me. I feel in my personal life that God begins to work when we get to the end of ourselves. And so when wow. you get to the point whereby you're saying, okay, I've been living with my father and my mother, and I'm looking for something new. And God says, I'm sending you out. God said, I'm sending you out to this city. I'm sending you out to Nova Scotia. I'm sending you out to Texas. I'm sending you out to LA. I'm sending you out to this place, that place. And you're thinking to yourself, how can I do this? He's telling you, go and release this song. How are people going to interact with it? That, that stretching period, that mm. unknown period is exactly what God is talking about when he talks about mm. overcoming fear, overcoming mm. fear. And so it's our duty to align our desires, firstly, as we've been talking, and then secondly, to be able to say, God, launch me wherever you want me to go. Come on. Launch me. God has mm -hmm. to launch us. When he launches us, that's literally when we begin to combat this, this, this spirit called fear. Mm -hmm. He has to give us a spirit of fear, according to yeah. the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mm -hmm. mind. Sound mm -hmm. mind to make decisions, power to be able to make decisions, love in order to make decisions. It's all about making decisions. And so mm -hmm. when it comes to these three things, power, love, and a sound mind, is to launch you forward. And so Abraham, Abraham went, he wasn't Abraham at that point, Abraham went, and we all know the story. He goes, he doesn't see anything. You know, uh, he goes, nothing's really happening. He doesn't know where he's going. Up mm -hmm. until Lot leaves him. And when Lot leaves him, then God speaks and says, look at the sky. And yeah. so that's when we begin to realize that the reason why we feel as though we won't be successful is because we feel as though we don't have the right crew with us to be successful. We don't have the right the right people around us so we're fearful of the of the unknown because we don't feel as though we'll have the support but mm. the word of the lord to many of you guys watching this and many of us watching this man of god is this and it's simple is that as we go out into the unknown god will create a way in such he will he will orchestrate mm. it in such a way whereby the lots will leave mm. our lives let me tell you something yes. because in order for us to mm. see, lot must go he has to go mm. lot has mm. to go. Lot has to go for us to see. It wasn't until Lot left that God spoke to Moses and said, look right. at the stars. He gave Absolutely. them the second time he spoke to him was after his nephew left. Now, what was his nephew? His nephew was the safety plan. He didn't have any children. So his <laughs> nephew was the safety plan. It was, if mm. I die, Lot will mm. die. God says, I'm Come not on looking now. 
<laughs> come on now. Come on now. This is late night revelation. He says, I'm not looking for Lot. I'm not. I don't need Lot to take over. He says, it's going to be somebody and it won't be your servants. It will be someone from your own loin. <laughs> Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I don't need a lot. I don't need it. So what happened is they began to fight over something that's so unnecessary, but the mm -hmm. fight was necessary. And many times, many of you guys are in uh, seasons of accusations and seasons mm -hmm. where the enemy is fighting you spiritually and, on, and things are happening in your life. That thing is happening in your life so that Lot can go. If it's not orchestrated Jesus. this way, Lot will stay. And if Lot stays, you won't see. Period. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. That's the truth. So I've had many mm. lots leave my life, and it's necessary. If they don't leave, mm. I can't see. Every Come time on. someone, a lot leaves, I see further. Every time a lot leaves, mm. I see clearer. I see what I didn't see before. I take more Jesus. risk I didn't see before. I, I go in a direction I've never been before. I, I see Ooh. things I've never seen before. The vision is clear. Mm. I, I mm. don't have fear anymore because I've combated fear by being launched out, and, and I've combated the fear of being left because I realize when they leave, I see better. Jesus, Jesus, praise God, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, ah, thank you, Jesus, Jesus. thank you, Jesus, oh, Papa, Shatara, Basa, Tela, Bagaro, Sianda, Daba, Shataya, Bosi, I feel man to Rebasaya, and they bring on the Rimanda, yes, Lord, they must go. Lot must go, lot must mm. go. In order for us to be able to get, see what we want to see, go where we want to go, we have to see clearly. Mm. You know, mm. the funny thing about it is that his name was forever going to stay Abraham until Lot left. He, he, forever. <laughs> forever. His name was forever going to be called Abraham, which means uh, um, Abraham is father of many nations, as we know. Hey. Abraham doesn't mean what Abraham means. That means that there is yes, an idol God wants to add on to your life. Many of you have been asking God, mm -hmm. when are you going to elevate me? I want to let you know, firstly, the title doesn't mean anything. That's the first thing. The title mm -hmm. should only, it should only um, uh, glorify, it should only magnify, it should only reveal what you've always been doing. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. But second, mm -hmm. There are, if we can use it like this, there are some things that God wants to do to you so that all will see, all will know that this is what God is doing through your life. Yeah. Now that, that thing, that, that tag, that reputation will only mm -hmm. come when what is your safety plan is exposed. What come you on. Your come safety on. plan, it needs to be your plan B, your plan C, your plan D. You see, that's why we can't launch into the deep because we're thinking, how can I launch into the deep with a plan without my plan B? Without plan B and C and D. I need plan mm. C all the way to plan F and plan Z. I need all of the plans in order for me to launch up. But that's not fear. Or that's not faith. That's mm. calculated faith. We're not supposed to live a life of calculated faith. We're supposed to live a life Jeez. of faith, which is in the unknown, which is outside of the comfort zone. But get this, faith comes by what? Hebrews 11.1, 1, by hearing. Yeah, hearing. Yeah. If we're not hearing the word of God, if we're not listening to the word of God, if we're not taking in, if we're not consuming this holy word, if we're not spending time in devotion, if we're not devoting our hearts, if we're not allowing God to work on our character, work on our desires, work on, if we're not allowing God to work on those areas, touch those places where we don't want him to touch, how will we know? How, 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 how will we know? Mm. How will we faith? Mm. How will we challenged how will we grow how faith comes by hearing we need to hear mm. the word of god this is not the time yes, in church this is the time to be in church this is not mm. not the time to, to to not hear the word of god this is the time we need mm. the word of god we need mm. the prophetic voices you know mm. the apostolic voices we need the mm. we need the fivefold ministry it's that Amen. Amen. It's that Mm, mm, this is so good. Oh my goodness. Like I see a lot of comments just coming in, but I can, I can just like right where I am right now, I, I can feel the presence of God so heavy because like there's, there's, there, there's the truth about when you carry something, you can't hide it. Like it's, it's, it's a light. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like you want to hide the light in, in the cover or something. If you have it, you have it. Mm hmm you know, like, you know, the, the altar now is full of a lot of, you know, performers. And I think COVID huh, um, kind of gave us the opportunity where, well, there's no, no, not a lot of altars anymore. Not a lot of like, you know, physical gatherings and stuff. And then everybody's kind of like, I don't know what else to do with my life. But 
does it mean that we've been living our life based on, you know, the crowd, based on the applause of people, you know, and now that we don't have, we don't have the avenue anymore, um, it's hard, it's difficult to seek God. Um, and th this is just, this is just so powerful. You know, everything that you've said tonight for anybody that's just joining in, um, I would employ you that you go just watch this over again and just, just spend some time with God for yourself. You know, no, like, you know, Pastor Kofi was mentioning how he got to know his purpose. He got to know where he was going early enough, you know, like get to know God for who he is for yourself. It's, it's very important, you know, like I, I grew up in a, in, a, in, a, in a Christian home. My father was an overseer and I, I didn't know God, you know, just we go to church every Sunday, um, but I didn't know God for myself until, you know, I was literally outside my comfort zone, outside my home. You know, and you know, I had the time to, to go for some retreats, like, and, and then I had this encounter with God. And this was like 2007 and it's still keeping me up to date. Like we need to have that personal relationship with God because that's where we build faith. That's where we build faith in God. There's no other place that we can find. This is, this is so good. I, I, what's funny is that I sent you a lot of things that I think we will talk about, but it seems like God is just taking us <laughs> in some direction. And I love it. I absolutely, right. absolutely love it. Um, pandemic. That's the time we are. That's the season we are. Um, how have you been able to remain fervent? Huh? How have you been able to stay in his presence, something that I know can help someone else out there. Intentionality. Intention. Mm. You have to intentionally want to spend mm. God's presence. Nana, what's up? Intentionally, um, you can't just say that. Uh, I'm gonna. You 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 can't think to seek him. You have to seek him. You can't. Mm about the action of one and be devoted you have to be devoted it's intentionality in everything that you do for me personally it's it's moments in worship it's listening to music in the car it's driving from from uh, you know home to church or you know church to work or work to back i i encounter the lord a lot in my car you know that's that's a big place for me to um encounter 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 the holy spirit and i'm um, listening to songs praying uh, many times i'm by myself i'm driving i'm praying I'm having mm -hmm. moments with the Lord. I'm doing devotionals in the morning. I'm praying for members. I'm, I'm being intentional, but I begin to realize that I can't, you know, someone posted it there. You can't pour out of an empty cup. It's, 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 it doesn't make any sense. And so what that, what that means for me is that I'm going to have to continually read for myself. You know, like mm. I'm teaching our church. We're in a series right now talking about the heart, but we just finished a series on the gospels of, you know, Matthew, mm. Luke, and John talking about Jesus and his interactions with people in the gospels. But in my personal study, I'm in the Old Testament. I'm in I'm in Second Kings. You know, my my personal study has nothing to do. I'm my personal study has nothing to do with the teaching series of the church. Wow. Because that is my personal study. Like yeah. I'm right mm. now in my study, I'm reading about Elijah and Elisha. That's where I'm reading. I'm that's where I'm studying for myself. Mm. I'm, mm. Not, I'm not studying to preach. I'm not teaching to preach. You know, I, I and I say this in all humility, all humility to the Lord. I, I wasn't here on this live, you know, looking through my Bible. And no disrespect to, to people that do, but looking through my Bible, trying to find what the scriptures are. No, but I believe that when it's in you, it flows out of you, you know, because Come when you on. spend time, it's not that I'm trying to remember verses, is that verses are coming out because it's intentional. Yeah. You know, I'm being yeah. intentional with seeking God. I'm being intentional with reading my word. I'm being intentional with praying, intentional with, with, with worship, intentional with developing my relationship. Because if I'm not, the enemy will find a way to let mm. me know that it's not as important as I, as, as I think it is. Um, and so mm. I have to fight that by being intentional with my times of prayer, intentional with my reading and my Bible study. Um, being intentional with things, I think, is, is the word for me. This is a word for me. Listen, this is really awful. And I, I, I hope that I know <laughs> that it's, it's blessing people out there. Be intentional. Be intentional. We are in a spiritual war, mm -hmm. warfare. You know, that's the uh, Christianity is not, it's not, it's not 
going to be easy. We, we, have, we actually have an enemy that is mad. Just the fact that I'm a child of God is mad. Like, I don't have to do anything. Just the fact, just the truth that I am born again. Mm -hmm. He is mad, right? Because like, I, I think about it like he, he, he thought in his heart that he wants to be like God and God sent, like, you know, like he had that thought in his mind and then here comes someone made out of sand, someone made out of the dust, mm. carrying the breath of God. Yeah. And he feels in his heart that I think that I'm way better because he was created, the Bible says that Lucifer, son of the morning, it was created with all, all the pressure stones. Like mm -hmm. he was the anointed cherub. He knows everything about the anointing. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was there, he's been there. And then here comes me, mm -hmm. made out of dust, carrying the breath of God in me. Mm -hmm. That alone, he hates it. And I try to encourage people, we are in a spiritual warfare. You're not just going to want to see God. You're not just going to want, the Bible says the heart of man is desperate, wicked. wicked. Who can know it? <laughs> like, it's, can not know gonna it? Just, it's not just going to come like that. And, you know, it's one thing that I love about you and I respect about you as, as a musician, you know, knowing you at first as a musician and just seeing the path that you've, you've taken. Like, it, just, it just makes me know that there's hope. Right. It makes me know that there are still people that understand and care about god like not necessarily about stage you've no. i've never i've never known you as someone that seeks the stage i've never known you as someone that seeks the crowd i've never known you as like and i you know i say that not because we're just here but it's just the truth you know like and i think that's what we should be pursuing you know i've spoken with a lot of people a lot of artists and it's almost like everybody just want to do stuff so everybody just want to do stuff but the problem is that the people that you look at right now, if, so, for example, someone is looking at you right now, looking at where you are right now, they don't know where you started from. They don't know where your foundation was laid. And if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Absolutely. They look at you right now, they're like, oh man, Pastor Kofi, he's so fearless, everything that he's doing. But listen, <laughs> you were not there. You're not there in this place of prayer. You're not there in this place of fasting. You're not there in this, in this place of, you know, I... I think for the purpose of our conversation, you know, Pastor Adeboye's son just passed, yeah. right? And I was listening to, he finally came up with a speech today and I was listening to it. And he was talking about, he said that death does not know, doesn't have anything to do with age. He said that it's not about how far, it's how well. He was talking about how Jesus was only 30 something. John was only 30-something. A lot of these people, but it's not about how far they lived. It's about how well they lived, like their relationship with God, their place of fellowship with God. There's a place, the story in the Bible, I'm not the preacher tonight. So. <laughs> There's a story in the Bible about the, 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 some, of, some, some random people, they encountered a demon-possessed person. Yeah. And they were like, in the name of Jesus that Paul preached, in the name of Jesus that somebody preached, and the demons looked at them and said, well, Paul, I know. Um, Peter, I know. You? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? Like, it's, even the demons, even demons know if you have something in you or not. So it's very important that there's a lot of demonic activities going on. There's a lot of warfare going on in our mind, in our body, in our thought, in everything. So it's so important for us to, to have that place of communion, the place of fellowship the place of knowing god it's the most important thing like i tell people i do service music and all of that awesome if god tells me right now that's the end that's the end because i'm not holding anything dearly to me because it's not me it's not my thing it's it has to be god you know it has to be god or nothing man i i'm just i'm i'm grateful for the opportunity that we have to spend you know this oh. time together you know and just just talk about uh -huh. you know this this is heart to heart to me and i think this is really blessing a lot of people out there and, and i'm just i'm just even me it's blessing me right now because it's important for us to get it right um we i think the last thing that i have here um is just to just let you just speak from your heart you know whatever whatever god is god is placing in your heart right now um i know you've been pouring out already <laughs> you've been pouring out you've been pouring out and for anybody that's just joining just go back and just rewatch everything um i just need you to speak 
right now prophetically to anybody that's just joining or anybody that would be joining because the word of God is not limited by time. You know, so anything that God places on your heart right now, this is fearless and God is building something in us. But you cannot just become fearless like this. <laughs> it's, it doesn't work like that. So I'm just going to leave the, the floor for you. Man. Yeah, uh, man of God, I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored for the invitation as well. I think um, being fearless is a is a mindset. It's a mindset. Um, the mindset. It, it is a shift in mentality. It's not, mm. and that shift is not something that, like you're saying, comes overnight. But I don't want us to also discredit the fact that it can come overnight. You know, because there, there are moments where revelation hits you and you realize mm. that I don't have the spirit of fear. The same spirit that mm. is the same spirit that is in me. And That's you. Good. And to realize the greater is he that is in me than he that is in mm. so It's the word that gives us the boldness. It's the word that Amen. comes faith. When you have faith on the inside of you, faith is the foundation for you to be fearless. Mm. Faith the foundation. Faith is the dance floor for you to be able to walk and dance knowing in, in all truth and in all knowing me that, that you are fearless. Now, I just feel and, and I have to run... Uh, now, but I, I just feel that the days of 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 performance have been over. They've been over. Um, just going back to that point that we came out of, that the days of performance have been over. Um, God has been looking for people that He can He can lay His mantle on and He can speak through and He can move through. And man, mm -hmm. like it's played out. Like it's played out to to want to simply perform and not to be used as a vessel. You know, and we are we are getting to that point in our generation that we need vessels. That's what we've been we've been needed vessels. Like we, that's what we need. That's who we need. We need individuals who would allow themselves, who would avail themselves, who would devote themselves, mm. who would abstain, mm. who would live right. Um, myself mm. included. We're all we're all doing our best. We're all trying and striving. Mm. We all need to do this. And so it's not. Me saying it is the word to all of us that this is the point where we really, mm. really need to sanctify ourselves and say, God, you can use us. We're not perfect, yeah. but you can use us, and He will. And when He Amen. does, what will happen is that a whole generation can be ignited, a whole generation can be set free. Um, and so it's Amen. it's it's the it's the the oil. It's the it's the true um, uh, usage of being a vessel over the performance mm. of things. And I believe that when we begin to um, truly uh, take on the mantle and be excellent at our gift and excellent at our craft that we will see mm. you know, millions brought to Jesus. And, and so I love Amen. you all. Um, Amen. Man of God, Amen. thank you so Amen. much for this. Um, I, I, I really appreciate that. I thoroughly enjoyed myself and, and I, I believe in this vision and this movement of being fearless because we need to be fearless. Um, if we, you know, we, we serve a God that is faithful, so we can't be, mm -hmm. fear we can't be fearful. We have to be fearless. Um, and so mm. I love you. I love this movement. Thank you. God bless you. I really ap appreciate you. Love you too. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank, thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. God it's bless my you, honor. Sir. My honor. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Love you. Bye. Alrighty. Bye. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so good. That was so good, and I hope that you guys are blessed. Um, thank you all for. Whew, thank you all for for coming on. Um, I'm so. So grateful to have my brother here, uh, you know, share with us. And this is very, very, it's important. This is this is what God placed on my heart uh, for starting Fearless. Um, I'm not I'm not one to do live sessions, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's important the time that we are now. Some a lot of us need help, you know, and wherever we can get the help, you know, we go for it. So thank you all for joining in. I know that you know if you've been blessed you can just go ahead and share this uh video is going to be on my my page right after and then you can watch it over again just spend time uh with god uh just make it intentional we've been talking about being being intentional just be intentional in your pursuit of god be intentional in knowing god one like have the heart that i want to know god for myself you know not not don't not necessarily I want to know God to be able to preach or do this or do that, but I want to know God for myself. And then from there you you will find your purpose. You will find all those questions that you have, you would find answers to them. 
all those things that you think they're difficult, they're hard for you, you would find answers to them and you will find your calling. You will find it's going to be so easy for you. Remember uh, when Peter saw Jesus, the disciples saw Jesus, they thought it was a ghost, right? So fear will make you see God as a ghost, <laughs> right? And then it, it takes faith to see that way. This person that we're looking at afar is not a ghost. This is actually Jesus. So a lot of us, we've been seeing, God has been calling us. God has been giving us signs, but we've been saying, no, it can't be God. No, no. You look at yourself, you're like, I don't think it's me. Nah, it can't be me. <laughs> Listen, it, you can only see God through faith, right? And Jesus, and then Jesus said, you know, they said, if, if, it, if it be you, Jesus, beat us to come. And then Jesus said, come. And then he stepped out of the boat and he started working on water. He started working on water. So just take the step. You know, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, we've heard you're going to have, you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose so many, like, listen, <laughs> but you know that you've taken the step, right? Don't worry about what the tomorrow would be. Uh, get rid of the safety net. You know, everything that we've talked about, just rewatch, rewatch. Uh, again and i know that god will bless you wherever you're struggling right now i just pray that the hand of the lord will rest on on you wherever you know you need strength i pray that the strength of the lord will be available for you um i need to remind you that god loves you god loves you regardless of where you are right now God loves you, like you're regardless of what your past has been, regardless of what the pain has been, the hurt has been, God still loves you. He will never give up on you. He will never give up on us. He will never give up on us. And his hands are wide open. He's always waiting and always waiting for us to come to him. Just take the step, you know, baby steps, right? We, like we always talk about, just take the step and just go to God. I want to know you and just devote your time in the word of God. Devote your time in knowing him. him. And then the more you know him, you know, I always tell people that one of the, the special things, the revelation that I, I've ever gotten in my life is knowing that God is I am. It's not I have, right? When God revealed himself to Moses, he said, I have, that I am, right? What does that mean? Like God does not necessarily have, like if I have an iPad and I give it to you as a gift, then it's no longer mine. Right. So that's I have. But I am is, is everything that you need him to be. You need peace. He is peace. I am peace. So instead of trying to seek peace from reading books or doing anything, just seek him. In him, you'll find peace because he is the I am. Right. Whatever you need him to be. Don't just go to God because you want to get something from him. It's only because you think that he is, I have, and he just wants to be giving and giving things. But every time he gives, the Bible says, for God loves the word that he gave his only begotten son. He always gives himself, right? He always gives himself. He, he, in him, we find peace. In him, we find strength. In him, we find life. In him, we, we find power. We find anything that we need to figure out our life. He is wisdom. Is everything. When you seek him, you have everything. So I hope this encourages someone out there. Again, I really appreciate you all for coming on. Um, I need you to go visit uh, Pastor Kofi's page if you haven't. Uh, follow on just social, uh, you know, show some support, show you some love. I appreciate you all. Um, the next episode, hopefully by God's grace, will be next week, but I I'll be posting about that. Thank you again for joining. I really love and appreciate you guys. God bless you. Have a good night.